This is Mrs. Winstead, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over Newton's three laws of motion, just kind of a quick glance and an overview of those three, um, and a few of the common forces that you're going to encounter in advanced placement physics. So to define a force, a force is really any push or pull on an object. There are a multitude of things that can generate forces. Uh, people can generate forces. There are invisible force fields out there. There's a lot of different things that generate forces. And forces change an object's motion. That's really kind of the important key word is that they change the motion of an object. Uh, that's, that's really kind of the critical thing there. Uh, they'll change the acceleration of an object. And forces are a vector, which means there's a magnitude and a direction. Particular forces have a particular direction that's associated with them. We'll get into that a little bit in this video. So Newton's first law of motion states that objects will stay in motion and objects will stay at rest unless an outside force acts upon an object. So in other words, if there is no net force, there will be no change in motion. Um, this does mean that an object can go at a constant velocity without having a net force because if the velocity is not changing, there's not a change in motion, uh, therefore there is no net force. So if you think about um, if you're driving, for example, and you let off on the accelerator, the car doesn't just like come to a complete stop right away. Uh, it takes a little while for the friction between the wheels and the road to actually cause the car to slow down to a stopping point. Um, so if you put the brakes on, though, you're applying more net force, so you're causing more of a change in motion. Um, just kind of gives you an idea there. And objects obviously don't move unless you put some kind of force upon them. The net force is the vector sum of all the external forces exerted on an object. And it's really important to consider every type of force that could possibly be acting in a situation when thinking about the net force. We'll get into that as we look at some of the problems in the future. The mass of an object um, affects an object's resistance to change. So heavier objects are going to be harder to speed up or slow down. Um, if you think about a train, it takes forever to slow a train down. That's why they say you should stay off of train tracks, because by the time the train sees you, um, it can't really come to a complete stop before it's going to hit you. Uh, because it's such a large object, it takes a large amount of force in order to slow it down. Um, so more massive objects are going to require more force in order to get moving or to stop moving. Um, mass directly contributes to the inertia of an object. So inertia is the tendency of an object to stay in motion after a force is exerted, and that is directly correlated to mass. Newton's second law is something that we'll get into in great detail during this class. Um, we're just going to kind of look at it for today's notes, but um, it basically states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So you can see acceleration, the reason this arrow is here because it's a vector, um, is equal to the sum of the forces, again, vector quantity here, divided by the mass of the object. Um, we normally see it expressed this way, with force equals mass times acceleration, um, but that's really kind of how the law is actually stated. Newton's third law says that for every action force, there's an equal in magnitude and opposite in direction reaction force. So if you push on an object, the object actually pushes back on you with the same amount of force. Um, so we'll kind of get into some more details of that as we go along. Here are some common forces that we're going to run into during this unit. And it's important to understand what these forces are and what direction they tend to act in. Um, because it's going to make a difference when we are working with uh, different object scenarios, which we'll start doing in class on Thursday. We'll start kind of defining how would you draw a force diagram, what forces are in place here, um, just how to get a picture of what's going on in a situation where force is involved. So um, gravity is the one that's always there. Um, I always say gravity is the right answer for every single force problem. That should be the one that you write in first because it's always correct. Um, gravity always pulls down toward the center of the Earth. It doesn't matter if the object is on an incline or on a flat surface, gravity is still going to pull it straight down toward the center of the Earth. Now, some component of that gravity might not really be quote unquote acting upon the object quite like in this situation here. Um, this part of the gravity that's pulling straight down, that's not 
all going to be acting on the box. There's going to be a component going this way down the plane, and then there's going to be a component uh, causing the normal force that'll be here. But it's important to know that the overall gravity is going straight down. Normal force is a support force for any flat surface. So it could be a table, a floor, a ramp, a wall, and it's always going to be perpendicular to whatever the surface is. So you can see on a flat surface like this, it's pointing straight up. On a slanted surface, it is perpendicular to the surface itself. On a wall, it is perpendicular to the wall. So it's really important to note that normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Friction is a really common thing that we work with in this class. Friction is a contact force that occurs when two substances are rubbing against each other. Um, it basically depends on the normal force on the object and the coefficient of friction, which is represented with the fancy U. I call that's called mu. Um, I call it the fancy U. Um, static friction coefficient is always higher than kinetic friction coefficient. If you think about when you're pushing an object. Um, it takes more force to start the object moving than it does to keep the object moving. So if you're trying to push like a table across a tile floor, uh, you have to push harder to get it started than you do to keep it moving. Um, and that's because the static coefficient of friction is higher than the kinetic coefficient of friction. Once you get the object moving, um, this goes down. The friction force is always in the opposite direction of whatever force is being applied. So if you are pushing a box this direction, the friction force is going to go this way. Um, in this case, the applied force is just big F, and friction is just little f. Um, usually it's going to be little f or kind of a fancy italicized looking f. Um, and then if you've got an object on a slanted surface, the applied force might be this way. This is actually probably an applied force due to gravity. Um, and then friction is going the opposite way up the plane. So the last force that we'll take a look at is tension. Tension is a pulling force in a wire, a rope, a cable, a string, you know, whatever. Um, and the tension depends kind of on whatever is causing the tension. So to give you a couple of examples here, um, let's say you have an object on a surface and then you've got a string going over a pulley, which we'll actually do this in class. So you'll get to kind of see what that looks like. Um, then on the other end of the string, you've got a weight. That weight is being pulled on by gravity. And that gravitational force is actually balanced out by the tension force in the rope. And so the tension up here in this part of the rope is going to be equal to the mass times gravity of this weight. Um, another example is when you have multiple objects being pulled on a string. So let's say you've got three objects and they're all linked together by string and then you're pulling on this end. Um, the tension force in this part of the rope here is going to be the highest because it's holding all the way to the boxes. Uh, here it's going to be a little bit lower and a lot lower. So you would need to have the highest possible um, ability to withstand tension here at the front part of the rope. So in our next video, we'll take a look at how angles affect motion and forces. And we'll also take a look at how to break down situations and systems so that you understand what's going on with the forces in a system.